Okay, hello everyone, and in this video we'll be looking at a concise introduction to nanotechnology, and we'll also be looking at core scientific skills that are appropriate for this course. So, the student intended learnings from the video are on the screen. By the end of this video, you should know the scientific prefixes from nano through to terra, be able to work in scientific notation form, and also to be able to determine how many significant figures a value has, and then be able to respond to numerical questions with the correct number of significant figures. Uh, this video will also give you an understanding of what nanotechnology is and what you'll be looking at, even if the introduction is quite brief. Um, however, a lot of the terms and definitions and uh, ideas that are expressed in this video will be explored further in the course as well. So in a nutshell, nanotechnology involves engineering on the atomic scale. So we're looking at a very small scale and how things interact and work on this scale. And there'll be many different uh, examples of this throughout the course. It is a field of study that has been developed since the 1970s and uh, quite a lot of work has been done in the field. There are quite a few interesting, unique innovations that are occurring and this will probably uh, continue into the future as well. And furthermore, a key idea to keep in mind is nanoparticles are tiny and uh, in future videos and future um, concepts that you'll be exploring, you'll understand just how small we're really talking about when we're talking about the nanoscale. So let's break down some of the key ideas here. Um, first off, nano is a Greek word for dwarf. So again, it's just a prefix of technology. So we're looking at small technology. That's essentially all it is. It's technology on the small scale. The uh, scientific prefix or 10 to negative nine. Again, we'll look at magnitudes and orders a bit later in the video when we're looking at scientific notation. Um, however, that is what a nanometer is. 10 to negative nine meters. And that's a billionth of a meter. So nanotechnology also involves considering atomic structure. So as I said before, the way different elements and uh, different molecules interact on this small scale, because that's very important to function within technology and uh, to get something to work on such a scale. Properties of materials are also different on the nanoscale, and this is something that's very, uh, very important because without these different properties, we wouldn't get some of the key advantages in technologies that we have because of uh, this scaling, being able to engineer and develop on this scale. So just to uh, kick off that idea behind some of these differences, there are a few key things that can be different about um, materials on the nanoscale as opposed to the scale that you're generally used to. Conductivity is a key one. Uh, a conductor is basically something that is able to transmit heat or energy, and uh, the level of conductivity, which is the extent to which a material is able to transmit heat or electricity, alters on the nanoscale. Light absorption, which is also a uh, key concept throughout this module, is uh, also something that can change on this small scale. Opacity, again, related to its appearance, can also be different on the scale, and also its behavior in magnetic fields. All of these ideas and concepts will be explored in latter parts of the module as well. There's just sort of a sneak peek of what we will be uh, considering when we're looking at nanotechnology and the nanoscale. So, when we look at current applications of nanotechnology, there are a few worth mentioning. Uh, the first one that I find is pretty cool are nanofabrics, which are able to repel water and other liquids. They do so due to molecular interactions that we'll look at later in the module. But uh, this means that you essentially won't be able to stain your clothes with coffee, or if you do, it will be easily removed from the surface. Self-cleaning windows is another application, similar concept to uh, the nanofabrics. Nanobots and nanomedicines are also uh, quite an interesting concept, uh, involving uh, new ways of delivering medicine and being able to cure diseases. Improved solar cells is a key one. Uh, again, looking at enhancing efficiency to be able to increase the amount of energy. And uh, graphene transistors are also quite a cool concept because they can drastically decrease the size of a transistor, which can lead to many computing benefits in the future. So let's have a look at scientific notation, which is one of the first key science concepts that you'll need to know for this module. 
because uh, again, it's working with numbers and orders of magnitude. So scientific notation is a way that scientists handle really big and really small numbers. Because of course, if you're writing out uh, something uh, such as uh, 1 times 10 to negative 15, there's a lot of zeros you have to write before you get to the 1. And uh, what we essentially do in scientific notation is we write a number between 1 and 9.99999, and then we write it to a power of 10. So again, we have that idea of magnitude there. Okay, so the best way to sort of wrap your head around scientific notation is to have a go at example problem. So we'll go through one together on the board. The number here, as you can see, is definitely a very small number because it's less than 1, however greater than 0. So what we can do when considering this number is write it in scientific notation form to give a more concise representation of it. So, again, we look for a number between 1 and 9.99. And in this case, we end up with, of course, 4.3 as our number. So now we can write this, again, we consider it with powers of 10, and we know that it's going to be a negative power because the number is, of course, quite small. And again, we're counting to the left, which also means it's negative. If we were counting to the right to get to the decimal place, that means we'd have a positive magnitude. So we simply count the number of decimal places, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we end up with an answer of 4.3 times 10 to the negative seven as being a representation of that number in scientific notation form. So in this case, we've got quite a large number because we can see that there are many numbers in front of the decimal place. In fact, this number is actually 47 million 642,842.42. So, again, the same logic applies. We need to find a number between 1 and 9.999. So again, we imagine putting a decimal place here when writing this in scientific notation form. So we end up with 4.76. Four, two, eight, four, two, four, two, times ten. And then what we do is we write it to the power. We simply count the number of decimal places. To the right we'd have to go to get to where the old decimal place was. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this one is times 10 to the power of seven. So what we can do to check is we could imagine just moving this one by seven. And again, we'd end up putting the decimal back here. So that's scientific notation. Again, it's about writing big numbers in a concise manner and small numbers in a concise manner. Maybe we would only just write this to a few numbers depending on the situation but we'll look at significant figures next. It's important to understand scientific notation because over the next few weeks with this module, we're going to be looking at very big and very small numbers. So there are plenty of practice questions available in the description below behind scientific notation, but for now, we'll move on to another key idea, which is significant figures. Okay, so on to the last part of our video, the dessert. So in this particular part, we're going to be looking at significant figures, and we're going to start off by looking at the rules behind significant figures. And there are six key rules you need to remember. There'll also be a link in the video description to where you can actually uh, get a copy of these rules, because they're very important to know. So, the first rule is if a number is not zero, it is always significant. So basically, if we have any number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, and it's not zero, it is always significant. There are no cases where a non-zero number is not significant. Rule number two, 
if at the end of an answer, after the decimal place, uh, if there's a zero, then that number is significant. And that will become more apparent to us when we do our practice questions as to what that actually means. Zeros between other non-zero digits are always significant. So if we have a one, then a zero, then a seven, for example, then that zero in the middle is significant. Zeros that help position the non-zero digits in the right spot are not significant. Generally, scientific notation is ideal to provide answers under these circumstances. So again, if we have zeros before the decimal place or zeros after the decimal place before we actually get to a non-zero number and they're just placeholders, as we put it, they are not significant because when you think about it, they're not really that important. Again, it just sorts out the magnitude. So rule number five is uh, quite an interesting one. So for multiplication and division, you round your answers to the same number of significant figures as the least precise measurement you have used in your calculations or in calculating. And uh, what this essentially means is you cannot be more precise than your least precise measurement, which is a very important concept in science. However, just to make things a bit more complicated, for addition and subtraction, your final answer must be given to the same number of decimal places as a value with the smallest number of decimal places. So this one's a bit more of an abstract rule, but it's one to remember nonetheless. And those are the six rules behind significant figures. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them into action. So what I'd recommend is if you want a copy of the rules in front of you so you know what I'm referring to when I go through the next few demos, then uh, click on the link description and uh, get a copy of that printed off or up on your screen so you can follow along with me. This is very important because whatever you do in science, when you're working with numbers, say you're doing experiments, you're doing practicals, anything along those lines, um, you need to ensure that the numbers that you are representing are appropriate. So, let's start with the first one. How many significant figures are in that number there? And this one's a nice and easy one because we can just use rule one from the list. And we don't have any zeros there. So all those numbers are significant. So it's just a matter of counting up how many numbers we have there. And uh, we have five there and four there. Five plus four is nine. So there are nine significant figures in that number there. That was way too easy. Let's try something a little bit more complex, shall we? How many significant figures are in that number there? Okay, so what we need to do now is use rule two and three. So there are seven significant figures. The zero before the decimal place is a placeholder, so it's not significant. This zero here, not significant, not really that important. However, the zeros between the five and the seven are significant because they're between two non-zero numbers and the final zero is significant based again on the rules that we had before. So when we're answering this question there are seven significant figures. Seven. Okay so now we'll move on to the third one. How many significant figures are in this number? So we got to use rule four with this one. So there are two significant figures as all the other zeros are simply holding the seven and six in the correct place. One could also write this using scientific notation, which we learnt before, as 7.6 times 10 to negative four. So when answering the question, how many significant figures are there in that number? There are two. Okay, and now on to this one. Find the product of 35.8 and 90.23 to the correct number of significant figures. So, let's have a look. Remember, when we're looking at multiplication division, we need to consider rule number five, which is what is the value we have there with the least number of significant figures. And in this case, it is 35.8, which is to the precision of 
three significant figures. So the best thing to do is to do your calculation in full, then round it off to 3SF. So we do 35.8 times 90.23, and we get something along the lines of 3230.234. But again, we restrict that to three significant figures. And so, again, you can do this on your calculator, but we end up with 3,230 to three significant figures. And again, that last zero is not significant, this one right here. And the last question is an addition problem. So we're finding the sum of those three numbers to the correct number of significant figures. Using rule six, we must identify the least number of decimal places on uh, any one of those numbers. In this case, we know that it's two decimal places on uh, this one right here. So what we must do is we must round our final result to two decimal places. So we'll get the pen out here. So we add those numbers together and uh, we should end up with 211, 211.975 and we just need to fix that to two decimal places. So we end up with 211.98 as our final answer to two decimal places as per rule six. And so on the last screen here, we have quantity prefixes, and this is also very important to remember. So we know that nano is really, really tiny with a billionth of a meter, because of course, in the introduction to this video, we learned that nanotechnology is about considering very, very small things, how they interact, and how we can use those uh, properties of materials on such a scale to our advantage when uh, developing appliances or other different consumer items. But then there are many other prefixes that we need to consider when converting between units. Because throughout this entire course, we're going to be looking at large numbers and very small numbers because of the kind of work we're going to be doing with the science. And so we need to know things such as kilo, mega, giga. You've probably heard of these all before. Kilobytes, gigabytes, kilometers, centimeters, millimeters. These are all common prefixes. And again, what we'll touch up on in later videos are the SI units, which are, of course, things like meters, kilograms, the units that are standard when we're talking about scientific quantities. But that pretty much ends the video. A really good way to remember this table would be to uh, have a copy of it available and um, just to evaluate it and uh, look at it. And uh, when you look at it, you'll eventually memorize a lot of these prefixes, which are very important to the course and the mathematics behind the course. So hopefully this lesson has set you up very well for the mathematics that's going to come later in the course. And we start dealing with numbers, when we start dealing with ways of interpreting the science using numbers. Um, these are all standard concepts, so if you keep practicing them now, they will be consistent throughout the entire course, and you won't have to worry about learning them when you're learning about a range of other different ideas. So uh, hopefully this has been a good introduction to what nanotechnology is, and uh, in the next video we'll have a look at how we can apply things like significant figures and scientific notation to actual numbers in the real world. So we can consider things such as distances, for example. We can consider things such as data and computers, and uh, also sizes of atoms, which are all important aspects of this course. So Polio Studio, as I said, has set you up well for what's to come. It should be an interesting course. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. There are practice quizzes below along with other practice materials, so give them a go, and uh, master the art of significant figures in scientific notation. Thank you for listening.